Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Konrad Gorlinski. The Prime Ministers of Poland and Lithuania, Mateusz Morawiecki and Ingrida Simonite, in a joint statement criticized the Belarusian strongman Alexander Lukashenko's regime for sponsoring illegal migration into Lithuania. The Prime Minister stressed that the Belarusian regime's support of mounting illegal migration from its territory to Lithuania was a ploy in retaliation for the EU's recent sanctions on Belarus over human rights issues. Mateusz Morawiecki and Ingrida Simonite noted that the operation was part of a hybrid war launched by the Lukashenko regime against Lithuania and Poland, who supported the sanctions. We condemn the Lukashenko regime's use of illegal migration to exert pressure on the EU and its member states. This again shows the cynicism of the Belarusian regime. Morawiecki and Simonita wrote. They also appealed to EU institutions to take steps in the matter and underlined that both Poland and Lithuania saw the need for a fast and decided response to the activities of the Belarusian regime and all involved in organizing and enabling the smuggling of illegal migrants. The flow of migrants from Belarus to Lithuania began in late May. So far, over 4,000 illegal migrants have reached Lithuanian territory. For weeks, Lithuania has been accusing Belarus of manufacturing a refugee problem on its border in retaliation for European Union sanctions on President Alexander Lukashenko's government. Belarus denies this. The Baltic country announced it would step up measures to prevent illegal border crossings. Thousands of migrants have crossed from Belarus this year. A news item by Lithuania's Interior Ministry quoted Interior Minister Agne Bilotaite as saying those who tried to cross in prohibited places should be considered as intending to commit a crime. Uh, they mentioned about people who were uh, actually leading them showing them the direction towards the border and uh, they also we also uh, have uh, quite a number of uh, materials which also show that the border guards uh, were actually uh, uh, not preventing them from uh, crossing the border uh, and 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 things like that so we we definitely have uh, quite a lot of information. Some of this information is sensitive and we're not able to reveal this information, but it's uh, at the disposal of Lithuanian authorities. So uh, for us, it's, it's quite clear that uh, the law enforcement agencies on the Belarusian side are directly involved in this criminal activity. Belarus has alleged that migrants turned away from Lithuania have been met with force. A spokesman for Belarus's border guard said on Tuesday, August 3rd, 40 people were turned back from Lithuania with injuries over the previous 24 hours. Vilnius is denying such charges and describes them as fake news and a weapon of the info war. A convoy of firefighters set off for Germany this morning with aid for its flood-affected areas. In turn, a police helicopter with a group of firefighters and police airmen on board flew to Greece and Turkey to help put out fires in the south of those countries. The national headquarters of the State Fire Service of Poland announced the deployments to Germany and Turkey. The convoy traveling to Germany is taking with it 138 air dryers provided by the Government Strategic Reserves Agency. The equipment will go to Rhineland Palatinate and is scheduled to arrive on Sunday, the fire service headquarters wrote on Twitter. At 4.30 a.m. on Saturday, a police Black Hawk helicopter took off from Warsaw Babica Airport to Turkey to help put out fires on the country's southern coast. On board were eight police aviators and three firefighters. Only a few hours earlier, a group of three firefighters set off for Turkey by land, together with the equipment needed to extinguish fires from the helicopter. Turkish firefighters, with support from Croatia, Spain, Ukraine, Russia, Azerbaijan, and Iran, have been fighting forest fires on the country's southern coast for more than a week. The Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki revealed that the head of the Greek government, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, asked him for support in extinguishing the raging fires in Greece. The most dire situation is northeast of Athens and in many places in the southern Peloponnese region. The fire has now reached a distance of only 20 kilometers from Athens. A group consisting of 46 vehicles and 143 firefighters. It's scheduled to arrive on August 11th, returning on August 23rd. Firefighters from the Czech Republic and Germany will also travel to the site.
The National Fire Service is about to send assistance to Greece. The government in Athens, under the EU Civil Protection Mechanism, has asked allies to designate four firefighting modules. A unit of 143 firefighters and 46 vehicles for forest firefighting is being assembled in Wrocław. Similar units will leave for Greece from the Czech Republic and Germany. A video of a police intervention in Lublin, Lower Silesia, has been published online, showing a man overpowered by police officers and then falling to the ground lifeless. According to police, the aggressive man was taken to hospital where he later died. The Lubin.pl portal received the recording. You can see it. Police officers are trying to overpower the man and put him in a police car. The man tries to break free. The officers lead him to the car, but the detainee loses consciousness. On August 6th this year, at about 6 a.m., officers from Lubin went to intervene in relation to an aggressive man who, as reported to the emergency number 112, was running in one of the streets of the town and throwing stones at the windows of buildings. The incident was reported by a woman, informed that the perpetrator was her son, who abuses drugs. The man was handed over to the medics and, due to his behavior, assisted by police officers. He was taken to hospital and then to the ICU. About two hours after being taken to hospital, the duty officer of the KPP in Lubin was informed that the man had died. The public prosecutor's office has launched an investigation into the case and the control unit of the district police headquarters in Wrocław was also informed about it. And finally, the 1944 Vola Memorial Run was held today in Warsaw for the fifth time. Participants tackled the unusual distance of 1944, as in 1,944 meters. The event was related to the ongoing commemorations of the 77th anniversary of the outbreak of the Warsaw Uprising. The run is primarily to commemorate the tens of thousands of victims of the Vola District Massacre. At the very beginning of the Warsaw Uprising in 1944, German soldiers killed civilians, women, children and elderly and burned their bodies. The mass of ashes left over weighed over 12 metric tons. To commemorate those victims, several hundred people participated in the Vola Memorial Run. In such a non-traditional way, not by laying flowers, but by paying tribute to the victims through physical exertion. For many, running even those 1944 meters is quite a feat. The event combines historical education and physical activity. My grandfather and my father were insurgents and soldiers in the home army. They fought to defend the power station in the Powiśle district. It is my duty to take part in such a run. In my case, I treat it more as a sport, but memory counts too. Honor and glory to the heroes. I am very happy to be here because such a run commemorates an important event. I try to live a sporty, healthy life and of course the purpose of this run is important to me. For recreation and fun, but also to commemorate those who fought. The result is of secondary importance. The event included a historical and educational show, during which the reenactment group Zavishatsi presented the equipment used in an insurgent field cinema, a field hospital, and the activity of the insurgent post office. Participants in the run can learn about the insurgents' equipment, weapons, and clothes of the period, see what the youngest insurgents were doing. They can learn about the history of the uprising and find out how weapons were produced in the underground. The celebrations of the 77th anniversary of the Warsaw Uprising are accompanied by many ceremonies and events. At 5 p.m., the Uprising Mass of 2021 began. The the cycling route runs along historical places connected to, with hospitals and dressing points operating in Warsaw during the uprising and after its capitulation. In turn, at 8 p.m., the 30th Warsaw Uprising run took place. The participants, remembering the fallen, ran in the light of burning candles. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Have a wonderful Saturday night.